I'm with Rave Mobile Safety um, on the sales side of the house here. I appreciate everyone getting on the phone and getting on to the webinar this afternoon or morning for those in the West Coast. Um, today, like uh, the invite had said, uh, we're here to just speak about one of our customers, GE Appliances, uh, how they used our communication software to reach out to their employees during the recent hurricanes of Irma and Harvey and for preparation for Hurricane Maria. But before we, I kick it over to our um, guests that we have with us from GE Appliances, what I want to do is I want to quickly just go through the RAVE interface so you can kind of paint a picture of what we're here to talk about, the RAVE alert uh, software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go into the RAVE interface and show you exactly the message that GE Appliances were sending out to their employees uh, to do wellness checks in those affected areas during the hurricanes. So this is the RAVE alert solution. Uh, it's, it's completely hosted in the cloud, so all you need is to log on through the internet and get onto your RAVE site to send out a message. So as you can see, these templates are already queued up, ready to go. And for today's purposes, this would be the General Electric Appliances Hurricane Harvey Wellness Check. So as you can see here, they would send out text messages and emails to their employees in those affected areas, and they would just say, simply press Y if you receive this message, and they do this wellness check two times a day, uh, which we'll get to shortly when I pass it over to those folks. Um, as you can see, the last part here, we just go target that specific area. They want a, a target for Harvey, those folks that were in uh, uh, Houston area, and they quickly would go down to continue, send that message out, and they get the confirmation. And as employees responded, they would show up right here in our reporting section. So I just want to paint a picture for everyone what we're talking about with our Rave Alert solution. Uh, but I know you guys didn't join this to listen to me today. You came to hear from our customers, General Electric Appliances, um, and we will pass it over to them shortly. With us today, we have uh, Keith Carpenter. Uh, he's a senior security manager at Gen uh, GE Appliances. Um, he can kind of give us a little background of himself uh, shortly, and along with Stephen Brown, who also serves on the security team there at GE Appliances. Uh, but maybe if we get started with Keith, maybe give us a little background of yourself, and then kind of Stephen, if you wouldn't mind as well. All right. Uh, hey, everybody. It's Stephen Brown, security director at GE. Um, I help keep managing crises. Uh, I guess the, really what I wanted to share is that in 2008, 2009, one of the things that we needed for our employees is another communication method. We had a, an emergency call, a number that employees could call to get uh, information, but they may not have known about it. We had call trees, but one of the things we wanted was something that's quick and simple, and that's how we identified RAVE. I did some best practice sharing and uh, reached out to um, the local um, population here and one of the universities I went to and visited them and got the you know what they liked what they didn't like and we made the decision to get rave in 2009 uh, we've used it ever since it's you know it's quick and simple and the really the reason that we needed it originally was because of weather events snow ice sleet where it would shut down production so we would update our production folks as well as our salary folks and maintenance whether they come to work or not come to work uh, through the use of the rave tool um, since then, it's kind of changed. Uh, of course, 9-11 changed things. Active shooters are changing things. Uh, fires um, and, them, and how you notify people, it's a piece of that communication as well as accountability and notification. Um, so now what's, what's, what we're kind of doing is kind of handing off the use of RAVE in the past to the, the use of you know, RAVE and emergency notification into the future. And that's where Keith kind of comes in as part of a project he's doing is employee accountability and notification. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Keith Carpenter. Um, I came on to GE uh, Appliances uh, last year. I retired after 29 years in the FBI as a special agent with the FBI. Um, upon retirement, uh, coming on here, I've been very fortunate uh, where Stefan uh, has had several years here in the experiences of, with GE Appliances uh, and that institutional knowledge. Uh, I was hired when uh, GE Appliances was sold from GE, and 
primarily part of my job was to look at the accountability and notification of employees during a crisis. And so we, we uh, started a project uh, back in January of this year to take a really hard look at what systems we have, whether it's manual or automated, and are we using them uh, to the most efficient and effective manner that we can and, and all, in all instances we can uh, use it. Uh, so based upon that research, uh, when the hurricane started coming in, we went to a proactive mode instead of a reactive mode with uh, RAVE. Most of the time when we utilized the system, it was more in a reactive uh, posture where if it's weather, we would give out notifications or a cancellation of uh, shifts or that type of thing. Where in this case, what we decided to do Let's take a little bit more of a proactive stance. And what we did is we located our employees. We started out actually with Harvey down in Texas, and we, we took a hard look at um, the employees. And what we have here is a little bit different. We have a campus within Louisville, Kentucky, but we also have uh, service technicians throughout the United States. We also have some other facilities as well. So what we did is we ran our employees by our uh, zip code area down that area, located what, what the hurricane path was gonna hit. And we went out with the notifications. We contacted uh, the management and the HR. Said, okay, uh, give us an idea of what employees are there and their current uh, emergency contact numbers. We want to locate them in RAVE and do wellness checks and uh, test this system out and see if we can't keep ahead of the game with them on their safety. So we, we, we learned quite a bit, a few uh, lessons from that as well. And as we did that, uh, we were able to send out these notifications and we did the first notification went out basically saying hey you will be receiving we hit both email and text and uh, identifying those individuals telling them you will be receiving two texts a day one in the uh, morning and one in the afternoon and to keep it simple we didn't want to have them coming back uh, and responding with you know different variations so we just kept it simple by saying you know answer why if you receive this so primarily what we did is we we sent out this uh, text and we waited about a half an hour uh, to 45 minutes. And then for those, we, we'd correlate the responses and we'll get into that in a few minutes, how we did that. But then we'd take a look at the responses and if we didn't receive a response from an individual, uh, we would we'd send out another text, wait about half an hour, and then we'd go to the phones and calling the emergency number, try to get a voice to, to confirm that they received the text for their safety. And after they got used to it, they would respond pretty quick uh, with the telephone calls. One of the things we quickly learned about uh, the system that would have been, uh, which was outstanding by RAVE personnel, is that uh, when we found our employees uh, batch loading them in uh, to the system, the, uh, Stefan and I started doing a fat fingering method, and we were like, "Oh, this is crazy." There's a guy, and uh, so we called, we contacted uh, Dan and said, "Hey, can you help us out?" And basically, uh, we were able to take an, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, send it over, and they, they do have the capabilities within the system. We just didn't have that option at the time but they were more than willing to assist us in this since we were kind of piloting this proactive measure. So we, we loaded them in that way. And then uh, as, the, as, it, as it went on, it, uh, they expected these texts and they got better and better. So uh, upon that point, we, we came into Harvey and then we went into Irma and then uh, we got better and better at it and more proactive with this where we'd go out a day or two in advance saying before the event was coming in with these texts saying, listen folks, uh, due to weather conditions, you may want to have, uh, you know, give them a heads up, be prepared for outages of phones. Uh, you may, you know, have your batteries charged, that type of thing. And then the big, the big hurricane hit in Puerto Rico, which really was a test for us because we lost all cell uh, connections. But we did, we were able to do a proactive measure on that, went out to the teams, identified them, as well as being able to send these texts out to them saying, you know, upon, uh, you, you probably will lose cell contact. Upon uh, re-engagement with uh, cellular contact, please uh, answer the text. So we were able to keep a good contact uh, with our employees. Some of the lessons that we, we learned um, was that basically uh, update our employee uh, emergency contact numbers ahead of time. What we found uh, for the most part was that some of the numbers were either dated or the emergency contact, there was a discre uh, discrepancy between emergency contact for an employee or emergency contact to be able to contact somebody if that employee was in an emergency, meaning another person. So we had to clarify that as well as we're doing a campaign right now for our, uh, to hit all our employees to update uh, their, their contact numbers to be current. So some of the things we had to do was scramble at the last minute to, dis to determine what they were. One of the other uh, 
lessons learned was addresses as well, particularly for uh, Hurricane Maria, where we went in, we were going to put boots on the ground and try to locate those individuals we could not contact via phone. And we found out that some of the addresses were a little dated as well. So that was a lesson learned, hard lesson learned for us as well. And we're, we're fixing that. So another lesson we learned was to be more proactive with, uh, uh, the more proactive you are, the better results you're going to get. What we did is one of the things that, that we learned, pardon me, <coughs> was we had to create spreadsheets when these individuals answered and we'd have to go down and, and I think Dan's going to uh, address this issue in a minute on the polling concepts with Rave. The poll, the, it was limited for us, and it was it was somewhat manual where we we would had we created a spreadsheet with the employees' names, and if they responded the first time, we'd check it off. But you, we had to physically go into the system and look for the uh, why instead of having it. The system's great at telling you who responds, but it's, it doesn't tell you who doesn't respond. And I think they're addressing that which would have been nice instead of having to go out and uh, manually figure that out. Um, and I, I think, like I said, I think they're coming out with a phase on that. And one of the other things we did uh, that we learned was establish the relationships with the management and the employees, but the primary management and the HR personnel here, which we already have, but the individuals that are on the ground, whatever location, you know, a smaller number of people, this was easier to handle. But if this thing had grown and blossomed to, uh, if it was here at the plant where we have, 5,000, 6,000 employees, it had been a little bit difficult to do it the way we had done it, only because of the manual process. Uh, the other thing was have a, prior, have a pr uh, plan prior to any crisis event. We, we kind of went in the first one uh, somewhat by the seat of our pants, kind of testing it. And as, it, as, each, and as each one went on, we got better and better with the process. And the fact that the point where Maria came in and we were, we were pretty good oiled machine at that point where we kind of had a good grasp on how we were, how the, how, what percentages were going to respond the first time and what percentages were going to uh, respond the second time. We got really good at kind of guesstimating. In fact, we were kind of betting against it, you know, having it uh, with each other. You got anything to add to that, Stephen? No, it's, it, that's very well stated. It's using the technology. It's having the data loaded beforehand because ours was kind of a knee jerk reaction. It was getting their information um, getting a message to them proactively, but we had to think ahead and actually load them a certain way into that geographic area. But so it was it, totally an exercise in employee accountability. But I will say during the entire process, and I will give a plug to Dan and his group, anytime we had a question or we needed uh, a quick response from Ray, we could pick up the phone and, uh, and no matter what time of day, and we did get a response. And we do appreciate that where we were, we were, we were kind of pushing the envelope on loading and helping us get the names in, and we do we do appreciate it because it did uh, test the system. Great. Well, <clears throat> we appreciate that. And, and, and just to kind of expand upon your, your point there, Keith, uh, I know you said that uh, you guys kind of taught us a lesson there. It was kind of a manual process today, kind of going in and figuring out who hadn't responded. Um, that's why we're rolling out this new polling feature is going to be coming around the corner is the key point of um, makes it even easier for those end recipients to give you an answer. So instead of relying on them to respond back to your exact response you wanted, this new polling feature will allow you to send this poll via text message or email where they'll receive this URL and you can have up all your different options here that you want them to respond to just to make it a lot easier. But the benefit here is with it using the URL, you can utilize the location as well within the uh, poll. So you can see on a heat map where responses are coming from, but not only where, but who, and what their actual response is. So just a way for accountability to get that much easier. And obviously with crises such as the recent hurricanes, uh, this will become very important as we move forward and, and accountability standards continue to uh, get more and more important. I, I tell you, Dan, that would have been a great tool. Uh, I would say that during the process we were using it, uh, that would have been enhanced our capabilities quite a bit because it was it, the the majority of the manual part of it was the polling process, uh, and we got really good at it at the end because we we created Excel spreadsheets and we were able to move through it. But once again, it was a small number of we're talking 50 to 60 employees per event, so it was it was doable. But if, if, like I said, if this would have been, we had a major event happen here in 2015, it was one of our plants. If we had another occurrence of that where we had, uh, 
you know, four or five thousand or even a thousand people to account for, we, we it would have uh, it would have easily overcome. We'd had a couple of people have just been doing nothing but that, and we'd have used that method. that have been great. Great. So what we're going to do now is just kind of open the floor up to questions for those in the audience. Um, the, the questions dialog box is on the right hand side of the GoToWebinar. Feel free to type any questions uh, and we'll answer as many as we can uh, with the time we have left. Um, but we have a couple questions that were already typed in already thus far. So I guess the first one we'd ask is just kind of, um, I guess, Stefan or Keith, what would you suggest to an organization that's kind of just starting to have the conversations around emergency communication solutions? Um, what kind of process would you, would you tell them to kind of take and uh, what kind of measures what would you suggest? Okay, I, I think that you got to look at what what is it, you, how big is your organization? I think you got to look at the scope of what you're trying to do, number one, and because we were looking at this, I was actually taking a look at the entire accountability notification process and some of the things of what is my scope, um, what, what, am, what am I trying to accomplish with the tool itself? If you, uh, it's totally different, uh, you know, we've, we've dealt with uh, UofL, we've talked to other companies, and, you know, of course, we're a manufacturing area where we have a couple different um, environments where we have hourly versus salary, you know, and how to reach those individuals. And, and then the other, uh, is it, are, are your phones company phones? Are they private phones? You know, there's the other issue of that with the legal issues, whether or not uh, it's voluntary, whether they put the phone in or if it's a company phone where there's no expectation of that. I think you need to take a look at that. That, that certainly helps you out because um, we automatically enroll those, those phones that are purchased by GE. We automatically enroll the phone into it. Whereas if someone, we also canvas out and say, hey, if you want to be involved in this uh, and, we're, and we're actually using the hurricane events for those individuals that don't have GE phones to encourage them to sign up because, you know, we can't force them to, but we can show them how this benefits them in the event of either hurricane tornado uh, or, you know, some other event because we plan on using it a little bit more for that event. But I think that, I think if you're, you're what, are, what are you going to use the device for or the, or the application for? Are you using it for emergencies only? Are you using it for uh, business uh, communications? Um, are you using it for everyday type of uh, polling or that type of uh, process? Seth, anything else? Okay. Did, I hope, did that answer your question? Yeah, I think that did a great job. And we've had a couple questions here just asking if this is going to be recorded. Yes, we have recorded this and we will send it to everyone who has signed up for the webinar. Uh, so that recording will be going out to you shortly after we end today. And yeah, now you didn't tell me that, Dan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, you, you, uh, earlier we kind of, you gave us a little bit of kind of your background coming, but can you maybe expand upon kind of like your, the, the makeup there? I know you guys have your facilities right there in sure. Louisville, people spread around. The yeah, we're, yeah, we're a lean team. Uh, we have quite, we've actually, we do our jack of all trades. We jokingly say we're a jack of all trades and basically a king of none. There's, uh, there's five of us. There's Lindsay, who's the director of, uh, the business, uh, security and she's oversees all the aspects and then uh, Stefan I can let him go into what he covers uh, do you want to cover you want to cover that yeah I guess it's the uh, appliance park it's emergency uh, response as well as we do investigations we do um, some protection we do uh, crisis response and then um, we have I have Louisville sites uh, one of them is the form which is a call center and then another one is first build, which is a uh, a small think tank kind of technology centered area that's actually on U of L's property. So they actually use Rave because they're with U of L, um, and U of L uses it. And then we also, just like Keith said, you know, we manage the crisis in Puerto Rico, so we could just make sure everything's covered across the world. And and I was brought on last year when TE Appliances uh, was. Uh, Procured by Hire, uh, their global security basically was with GE, uh, the mothership, and I came on to handle uh, the new aspect of the global sites and the locations we have and travel of our personnel, the security of personnel, as well as overall crisis management and assisting in that and taking a look at uh, how we handle crisis and how we handle business continuity. And then we have uh, another individual, uh, Ayla Horlick, who uh, it handles uh, uh, investigations, 
uh, training modules. Um, and then we have Jerry Poor. And Jerry is a, a, a senior guy that's been around for quite a while. And he handles uh, executive protection as well as special events. I also handle special events with Jerry, uh, meaning whether we have a board meeting or whether we have uh, groups of individuals that are going one place to another that need security or we have to put security on a site. We hand as well, Stefan handles that. We kind of jump over whenever someone needs help, we just kind of mix it in because we are a small, small team, but we're, we're lean and mean. Awesome. Uh, so we have another question here that just speaks upon the campaign and kind of getting your employee contact information updated. Kind of what's involved in this? Um, person who asked this said they've had kind of similar struggles at their organization as well. So how are you going about this and kind of what's involved in that process? That's a great question because we, we struggled with that as well. We're working in conjunction with our HR. We're having a security awareness week in November and we're going to canvas. What we found is our we're in a unique situation where we, when we did change over from GE to GE appliances, we changed over some of our systems. So in doing so, they had to update those systems and it recognized that we had to go out to the employees already to update their, uh, their locations as well as their telephone numbers. So there, we have the capability, we, we have working with HR to go out and do these communications, these bulletins to our employees to, you know, for their awareness. Just today, uh, Lindsay, our security director, is making for the Security and Awareness Week a video regarding the hurricanes and how we notified people, it's what we talked about, the description of that, and it's going to be shown uh, during the Security Awareness Week. We'll have uh, individuals come in, guest speakers, that type of thing, and during that time frame, we'll, we'll canvas the employees and we'll We'll go out one to one if we have to. I've, I've actually, a lot of times, in discussing this with people, we'll we'll go to other meetings. We'll any avenue we can hit, we go to. If we can interact with any other entity uh, here at the park uh, during any meeting, we'll we'll try to bring it up and ask those uh, business managers to bring it up to their employees to to update their uh, information because it's up to the individual employee here to update that contact information as well as volunteer. So we're, we're, we're selling it, we're selling it. Great, and that's kind of a great segue into the next question. So what percentage of employees opt in to provide their cell phone numbers for emergency purposes such as this? And how many people total were you trying to message? My company has a hard time getting past 55 to 60% participation. Uh, uh. A conservative number, Dan, would be we require 100% of our company paid cell phones to be in RAVE and about 40 to 50% um, of others that are, you know, their own personal cell phone. And uh, some of that is what I call unrealistic privacy concerns. They, you know, they think that we're going to use it for something else. But we only use it for emergencies. And then um, we have an hourly population that we have to uh, be aware of, you know, as far as, you know, cell phone charges and things like that. So those are concerns, but we honestly, we, we have um, a document that says we'll test it once a year and then we'll use it for emergencies. And this past year at Appliance Park, anyway, we've probably used it maybe four times and that um, any event that's, like I said, it's still um, weather related more than anything. We don't have it set up in a way that we would evac use it for a, um, an, an evacuation because those are typically a fire within a certain building. So it's probably about 40 to 50 percent and then 100 of the um, company paid cell phones. Have you guys came up with any other use cases? So obviously you spoke a lot about the weather. Uh, have you guys came up with any other use cases internally to use this system for notifications maybe outside of those true emergencies? Yeah, so once once you get uh, people loaded in the system, another use of that uh, of it could be we have area sales managers. So the sales team will take those employee names and their phone numbers and put it in a bucket, and then they will give them updates with regard to our products or you know if they want to drop prices or raise you know they use it as a tool to communicate to their ASMs. We've also discussed the fact of like where we can identify employees, whether it's a zip code and locations like the shooter that took place in Maryland a couple, uh, uh, I guess it was last week or a week before. We even uh, threw out and discussed, okay, if we have service technicians in that area and we had their phones, 
we could uh, theoretically notify them via rave and let them know that hey be on the be on the lookout or just be uh, be aware of the situation that there's an individual you know it's armed and dangerous within your area if they if they're not on the radio or if they don't have any other uh, media on they may not be aware of that and it may be we talked about doing that type of thing as well All right, got a couple more here. I'll see how many we can get to, but one one more I see here is, can you talk more about the accountability review process? Was that a mandate by hair, or was that something you guys did internally, and what kind of led to you being kind of proactive approach using the RAVE system? Yeah, that wasn't mandated by uh, anyone other than ourselves. We Well, uh, other than the executive manager here, we had discussions about um, how we account for people. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, we had a situation in 2015 where one of the plants, we had a fire and we lost one of the buildings. And fortunately it was a, it was Good Friday. So the, the, the personnel count was low and the capabilities of us locating individuals uh, was a lot easier than it would be on a normal day. So given that, uh, looking at that situation, um, we, we determined we really need to get, figure out in a more, more efficient, effective way of, pardon me, in, in uh, locating individuals. So it was, that was self-driven in that point. There was no mandate by hire or other than just here in executive management recognizing a need. So in that process, in reviewing it, um, if I could go back, I think the question was somehow how we did it with um, the accountability regarding the smaller version uh, with Harvey and Irma. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what, what we did is when we sent out these notices and asked them to respond, we kept it really simple and just said, just just respond with a why. Uh, you know, that's all we needed was a yes that you got it. Because you could you could we could put anything down if we wanted to because it really doesn't the system doesn't recognize it. It was for us for more more than anything. So uh, as I said, we were very fortunate. It was maybe 50 to 60 people. We created a, an Excel spreadsheet beforehand with their names in it, and then I had uh, four columns out to the side: uh, first hit, second hit and third and fourth. So during the first one, what we would do is uh, I would go into the system where you get your reports and I would watch it as it came in because you get updated every few minutes. And I would just go down uh, down through the, the checklist and check off their name. It was, it was manual that way where I actually, if it was Smith, I'd go down and, okay, Smith answered why. And then I would keep track of that. And then I would uh, note the time that I last looked. A few minutes, I'd update the system about every 10 minutes or so and take a look at it and mark the names off. And then I just knew that when I sent, we, we pre-designated the time on RAVE where you could uh, send out the messages, and I think it was 10 and 6. Was it 10 and 6? So we went ahead and had them go out automatically at 10 and 6. At 10.30, I knew that I was going to be uh, collating the list because I was, I was going to send out another. Well, whoever didn't respond, I was going to hit them again, to which it, the system allows you to do. So I sent out the next, uh, you know, saying, hey, you didn't respond to the first one. Please respond. Um, and then within the next half an hour if they didn't respond we were either either I was doing a personal text hitting them out with my phone or we were picking up the first the first couple times we were hitting them by phone and doing voice uh, voice calls so basically it was a it was a checkoff list going so you can see where it would become uh, extremely cumbersome if you had more than a hundred people on the list because it, it did take some time but then after a while what I did is I, I you could actually uh, print it out you can dump down the list that comes in as well. There was a way to reverse engineer it in uh, Ray. We got pretty smart at it. And I took a look at when I would send out the, the messages, the second wave, I would just look at who I've sent them to and then I knew uh, who hadn't responded. So it gave me an idea. I could look at the list and kind of reverse engineer the process. Instead of sending out the list, I go down and look at and hit, you know, follow up. And then I'd go down and edit the list and I could, and without editing it, and I would, could look and see uh, who was going to get it? So it narrowed it down. Who who hadn't responded? So I got a little bit smarter as it got got onto it. All right. Uh, looks like we got one final question in here. We we'll just say, given the limit uh, limited modes of communication uh, functioning in Puerto Rico after the storm, what modes of communication proved uh, effective to, to, for recipients to respond back to? Sorry, Maria. Um, so yeah, the cell phone. Yeah. Once it came up, the cell phone, yeah. because they were more, once they got their cell power back on, uh, they were kicking it out. We, we actually talked about that in advance as well. If you have a remote location, uh, we've even talked about sat phones, getting them down there where they could respond to one individual and just have one individual call in. And we were going to their managers and on the ground 
the managers, it's such a small community down there. They kind of know each other. So they were accounting for each other as well. And if we were on a daily call when they could get in, um, and those managers were accounting for people and letting us know, uh, if they, if, you know, whether we, we weren't getting a response from individuals, we'd go through the names or they would let us know if they had contact with them physically. And there was a couple individuals we hadn't heard from in a while. We were, like I said, we were about ready to go boots on the ground and start looking for them. And, um, but they, they eventually, we gave it, we did give it a little bit more grace period on that one only because the cell towers went down and then that, that we just had to be patient with that one, and that was that was everybody there. Awesome. Hey, well, Stephan and, and Keith, we really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. We uh, thank you for everyone who was able to get on the webinar. Uh, like we said previously, we will be sending this out to everyone. Um, my contact information, Dan Breslin, is up here now. If you guys have any further questions, feel free to contact me, uh, shoot me an email, or give me a call, and I'd be more than happy to speak offline with you. But without further ado, again, appreciate everyone's time, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.